So my name is Miria Gray and I am the Community Education Officer here at Chelsea Groton Bank. And today we're talking about record keeping for a small business. Now, um, record keeping in this aspect is um, we had um, a session that was about bookkeeping and financials. This one talks about how you should keep your physical records and um, how long you should keep documents and where you should keep documents and the physical record keeping that you need to do for your business. So we're going to um, talk about um, explaining the concept of record keeping, identify some re good record keeping practices, rules and tools, um, explain how record keeping practices, rules and tools work and identify some benefits explain it, um, talk about some different um, products that are available. Um, so this uh, really is important for all small businesses, whether you're a sole proprietorship, a partnership, a corporation. Um, and the term record keeping is really, um, it's an orderly and disciplined practice of keeping your records, of storing your business records. Um, it's probably one of the most important things that you can do outside of the financials um, for you as a small business, because the success of your business um, really depends on you keeping good records. So um, it's, it's important for all of that. All right, so record keeping, it's basically, um, it ranges from you know, a simple manila folder, like if you are a really small business and um, maybe you just do some craft shows on the side, maybe you can um, keep things kind of track in a manila folder or a binder, um, or up to, you know, computer online record keeping. Um, it really helps you be able to provide fast retrieval of your records. Um, and, oops, I'm going backwards. And, um, be able to keep them updated on a regular basis, but good records um, need to be kept for both business and personal, and they should not be kept together. So you should keep your personal records outside of your business records and your business records outside of your personal records. Um, and, it, and the level that you're going to use for record keeping is really going to depend on the size of your business. A really small business is going to need different record keeping things than something that's like a really large corporation. They're going to need something a little bit different. And so you'll want to choose something that is best suited for your size and type of business. Um, if you want more information about S uh, record keeping, you can go to sba.gov um, and search record keeping and they will um, pop up some um, different sources and uses for you to be able to use for record keeping. But for personal record keeping, um, you're going to want to keep everything separate. Um, so for your personal records, you're going to want to have that um, different files, different folders, different system than for your business records. Um, so for example, what oftentimes gets confused, especially with small business owners, is that they're using the same checking account for their business account as they are using for their personal account. And this mostly happens with um, smaller vendors that maybe are doing craft shows and things on the side. And then it kind of morphs into something a little bit bigger and nothing really ever gets changed. Then it's really hard to separate out your business finances from your personal finances. Um, your business needs to really have um, its own business accounts. Um, its own savings accounts, especially if you're an LLC. If you're a registered LLC and combine in any way your personal accounts and your business accounts, it voids out that LLC um, because um, there is this veil that it's like a, a super secret invisible veil. Um, and anytime that you combine the two, it's what they call piercing the veil. So um, so for example, if you're using your personal email account, email business clients that, and somebody sues you for something, um, then your personal email, all of it is open, um, to use. 
Okay. <clears throat> so why is record keeping so important? Excuse me, Mar Maria? Yes. Is that the same like, we're unable to get a charge at this moment. So for your credit card? Yeah, so I have a card I just don't use for personal, kind of, sort of, most of the time. And is um, that? Yep, so um, the best thing to do would be for your business account to open a business checking account for your business. I got that. I spent the charge. Yep, so... Um, and then you would use the debit card that attaches to that business checking account to make your purchases. Yep. Um, often well, now you're assuming good cash flow. <laughs> yes, you have. Yes, basically cash flow and record keeping are tied together a little bit. Yeah. Um, okay. Uh, yeah. So. Sorry, I just wondered. Yeah, they should. Yeah. Be yeah. So, um, oftentimes. What I would say to keep everything separate is if you're going to open a credit card to use for your business, do not use that card at all for personal. So I would make it only for business. Okay. Okay. So that you can say, you know, so you're very clear that the purchases that were made on that card we're only business purchases and you don't have to go through a statement every month and like weed out what was a personal charge and what was a business charge because it gets really confusing after a while you know if you go to staples and you don't remember if you bought you know something for a home office or something for your work office sure okay thank you you're welcome all right so why is business record keeping important so really Record keeping, it's not solely about fulfilling regulations. It's really for you to be able to run your business, um, but it's to be able to run your business now and in the future. So with good record keeping and detailed tracking, you should be able to see what you've spent this year and be able to help estimate what you're going to spend in the coming years. Um, it also <coughs> um, can help plan for the future, will help if there's any legal issues, um, and, and as well as tax preparation. So we're going to um, go through each of these in a little bit further detail. Owning a business will require you to track a significant number of things. So um, such as customer sales, your inventory, and without proper record keeping and details, um, it will lead to problems helping you serve your customers. So for example, if you don't have if you take orders, for example, and you don't have a great platform for taking the orders and keeping track of them, there is always the option that you might miss fulfilling an order. <coughs> or um, you don't know where you're going to send it or when you're going to send it. Um, so planning is really important. Um, <clears throat> it will help plan for your business in the future. Um, for example, for clothing store owners, if you um, made purchases and didn't sell something, keeping track of um, what types of things do and do not sell in your store is important. <coughs> um, you really want to know if something was really a good seller that you would want to purchase it again. And if it took you months and months and months to get rid of a product, that might not be something that you might want to order again. Um, also, you'll want to know how much stock you have on hand. If something happens, it's going to be really important um, in a fire or a theft, for example, to know exactly how much product you had on hand at the time. Um, and for legal compliance. So as an owner of a business, you are required to keep certain documents um, and you'll probably execute contracts, um, hold various licenses and permits. And if you're an employer, um, you'll be required to maintain a report employee payroll um, for tax purposes. So it's really important to keep track of all of those things. So having a good system for maintaining contracts, for example, it's critical because if you've signed a contract with somebody, um, 
for sales, services, financing, um, you may need to refer back to it to make sure that everybody is fulfilling their obligations on that contract. Um, licenses and permits, you'll want to have a good tracking system for those. You want to know that they're current, um, when you need to reapply for them so that um, they don't expire and you don't realize that they have expired. Um, <clears throat> you'll want, um, for example, if you are a at home business or a food prep business, you'll want to make sure that um, you have contracts and permits in all of the areas that you'll want to sell. For example, I see frequently um, businesses that have food licenses that they're licensed in certain regions in Connecticut, for example. Some people might fall under the Legislate Health District, while some people might fall under the Uncas Health District. Um, and you need a permit for both of those districts in order to be able to cross the line. Some of the towns are like right next to each other and um, some food businesses don't realize when they've kind of hopped the limit and need to contact the next health district. So it's really important to keep track of all of those types of things. Um, for example, your business, uh, regardless kind of of what your business is, will be required to track things like um, hiring and evaluation documentation. So if you have employees, you know, when you hired them, um, you know, how you hired them, you want, they might, you might need to produce their contracts, you might need to produce their applications. Um, if you evaluate them, do they get annual evaluations? Those will need to be kept on file. Um, what wages you're be, what they're being paid, any social security numbers, the total number of hours that they're working. Um, additions or deductions from wages. So for example, if your employees get a bonus or um, if your employees are required to wear uniforms that are deducted from their paychecks, um, you'll have to keep track of that. Um, income and tax withholdings, you are required as an employer if you are paying the people out to deduct their taxes. Um, fair labor standard acts are required um, information injury reports. So if one of your employees gets injured, um, on your site, you need to make sure that you are tracking that in some way, employment records. Um, and if you have any questions about that, you can go to the irs.gov. Um, that is not something that I am a specialty uh, with, but um, we do have a tax prep class coming up with Ed Munzner. And he will be able to get really specific about payroll and tax withholdings and things like that. So if you have any questions about that, that would be a great person to ask. Um, all right. So the owning your business is going to require that you track um, a significant amount of information such as customer sales, um, which I've said before in your inventory. Um, and so you need to have a recording system for that. Um, you don't want to disappoint your customers. Um, I've, you know, ordered things off Etsy before and um, sometimes they're not coming as soon as I would have hoped or maybe they've lost my thing. I understand it's a small business, but you know, I might have wanted something for a gift. So it's really important you know, to keep on track of those types of things. All right, record retention. How long do you need to keep things? So, not only do you have to keep good records, but you have to keep them over time. So, time cards need to be kept for at least two years. Um, that's for tax purposes. But before you get rid of those, you may want to um, check with your accountant and just make sure that that's how long they want you to keep them for. Um, so your accountant or your tax preparer may want you to keep them longer than the two years, uh, just in case of an audit or something like that. But um, two years is the cutoff. Any personnel files, three years after they have left your company. So 
um, contracts, four years, inventory, four years, um, personal insurance records, five years, checks and payables, five years, invoices and receivables, five years, payroll, six years, retirement plans, annual statements, and auditor's reports are forever. So all of those types of things you're going to um, keep forever and ever. Um, everything um, kind, um, you know, things might be different depending upon the size of your business. So this is your typical example for a small business. But if you're corporate, contracts should be kept for seven years. Um, and you need to keep licenses, permits, and insurance as required. Um, tax returns, as a business, you should just hold on to those. You know, um, individuals are like seven years, but as a small business, you should just hold your tax returns um, just, just in case. All right. So how do you keep track of all of this stuff? So you could use, um, for example, like a simple paper tool or a tickler system, um, computer systems or cloud accounting, um, which could be, you know, accounting or file hosting. So the most important thing is to start your business and get it going with some kind of a system. Um, and then as your business grows, you can expand that system to be what you need it to be. So let's, what is a simple paper tool? So it could be that file folder that we were talking about or hanging folders in your file cabinet. So if you're that real small business that is doing like crafts on the weekends, Maybe you're just keeping that expandable file folder and everything is in there. You know, all your sales receipts or however it is that you're tracking. If you're a little bit bigger, maybe a hanging file folder section um, in a file cabinet with each file folder labeled. Um, and so you might wanna track things like, who are my clients? What are my orders and things like that um, in your cabinet accordion folder. Um, again, that would be only if you're really a small business. You might want to start a tickler system. So this can be um, in whatever kind of email system that you use or your um, calendaring system that you your business might use. Google is fine if you're a small business. Um, but you're going to want to set reminders about things that are important coming up, like quarterly filing, quarterly taxes, um, any license renewals, insurance reviews and renewals, any upcoming bills, um, any callbacks. So all you have to do is, um, you know, put the due date on them and have it maybe remind you a week in advance that it's coming due. You don't want to be in the day before because if you have upcoming bills and all of a sudden you're being reminded the day before that you need to pay a bill, there's a chance that you're not going to be able to get that bill paid in time. So um, reminding yourself a week in advance, maybe with quarterly taxes, you might want to give yourself a little bit more time than that, but definitely um, remind yourself license renewals a week is fine unless you have to mail something in. Um, if it's a state license renewal and you have to uh, mail something to the state, like check, um, you may want to do more than a week in advance because you do not want to let your license lapse. Computer systems. So um, they're great. It takes way less space than paper, obviously. Um, it's faster and easier. You can pull it up when you need it. Um, Many businesses and government agencies allow the use of internet, almost everybody now. Um, I don't, I mean, banks use the internet. Everybody kind of uses the internet now. So I don't, I can't think of any specific uh, business that would not allow you to use that. You can um, grow into a computer system. So you can start out with something smaller, like, you know, your personal records and a filing cabinet. 
and then grow into a computer system over time. Some people that are really tech savvy would prefer just to go right into a computer system and be paperless. But if you're going to do that, make sure that you're backing up those files because the worst that can happen is your computer dies or crashes and the only place that they are saved is on the hard drive of your computer. Then you have nothing. So make sure you have some kind of cloud documentation. <coughs> cloud computing. So this is using the internet to store, manage, and process your data via uh, versus your own personal computer. So like a Google Drive <coughs> is cloud computing. So um, I work with a lot of nonprofits um, and we keep everything, you know, on our computers, but we also have backup on a Google Drive, for example. Um, it's much easier to transfer files that way. You can um, just share a file folder with somebody and they can grab it right out of there. Um, but um, some, some businesses, it might not be as secure. You might have to buy something um, that is a little bit more secure than uh, Google Drive, for example. Um, banks, for example, use, um, we provide um, a cloud kind of um, place where you can send secure documents to us versus sending them through email, which is not as secure. Um, because while our, our email is secure, your email might not be secure. So we provide a cloud area that's very secure to share documents. Um, if you are um, a business that needs to send contracts back and forth, um, you may want a cloud folder for each one of your businesses that, so that clients can drop things in there as needed. Um, if you do graphic design or something like that, um, cloud databases are great because uh, you can upload documents, they can download documents without having to email huge gigantic files back and forth. Oh. So cloud computing and accounting, um, many um, software companies have uh, cloud accounting, such as QuickBooks is, can now be online. Um, what's great about it is you do not have to buy software upgrades because it automatically updates. There's no data loss when your computer crashes. <clears throat> you can access the data from anywhere. But for example, QuickBooks Online is not as robust as the regular QuickBooks program. For most people, it's going to be everything that they need. But if you're a larger company, um, you might need something a little bit more than QuickBooks Online. Oops. Um, so file hosting, share large files. We talked about that. You can access it from anywhere. Um, there's free and fee-based options. Google Cloud Share is free. Um, you can pay for more storage. There are some other options also um, that you can look into. Um, but it's great. Oftentimes I found that maybe um, I'm out and about. I've gone somewhere for the weekend and somebody needs something and I'm not home on my computer but I can access it with my smartphone. So it's a great way to be able to send files uh, back and forth and have access to them from anywhere. You can log on to any kind of cloud um, from any computer. So it doesn't have to be from your own computer. Is Google Cloud the most popular <laughs> one? Um, for a lot of small businesses it is because you can get up to a certain point for free and it's really inexpensive. <laughs> and a lot of um, small businesses use a Gmail email address. Right. Sure. Um, so it all ties together because the, um, the cloud kind options come with that Gmail address. So once you have that, um, you have a Google Drive already. 
So, you know, adding a little bit more to it is easier than like coming up with a new solution. Um, Some businesses grow out of it and need to go to something different, but a lot of them are just fine with it. It depends on, um, I don't know what you do, Deborah, but um, it depends on how secure your information is for most businesses. Um, the information that they're sharing is it's nothing confidential but um so when you're choosing your business software though you need to like evaluate what your business needs are so you need to think about like what exactly do I need this software to be doing um uh many software products that are available for spreadsheets email and accounting um, Office is a great tool. It has Outlook. It has, you know, Word. It's got Excel. It has all of those things. That is a more expensive solution. Um, again, Google has its free um, platform. So you can use Google Sheets, Gmail. Um, it does not have any accounting software. Office doesn't either. <coughs> But um, you could go to a QuickBooks for something like that. Um, or there are definitely other tools out there. If you have questions about other tools, um, a great person to ask coming up would be Ed Munzner. Um, he, he, he has uh, tax accountants and software programs that they've worked with. So what might your business need in a software? Are you doing inventory tracking? Do you have things that you need to keep track of? How many, you you know, if you're doing widget, how many widgets do you have? How many widgets you are using this month? How many widgets are you going to need to order? Or have you got all the widgets you need? Um, manufacturing, um, e-commerce. Um, for example, if you're doing e-commerce plus you have a storefront or you're doing live things, if you've got, um, five items and um, you have five items for sale online, but you just sold three of them at a craft show, um, you don't really have five items for sale online anymore. You only have two. So making sure that your actual commerce plus your e-commerce matches up is really important. All right, do you have multiple users? Do you want multiple users? Is it just you? Are you a sole proprietor? Are you the only one that needs to have access to it? Or do you have kind of multiple things going on where maybe you might have somebody else that needs to have access to that system? Do you have something that's industry specific? Um, there are certain industries out there that have industry specific software. So if that's the case, then you're going to want to look into that versus you know what the mainstream people are using. Online options. Can you do what you want to do online or do you have to um, do it in paper, via email or whatever it is? What else might you need? What are you looking for as a company? What do you need it to do? All right, so we are talking uh, now about your business software and your email. So we're all pretty familiar with using email. Um, we've become uh, pretty good at it. Um, sorry. Are you using it to communicate with your clients, with your employees, support vendors, talk to contractors? How are you using it? Again, we do not wanna be using our personal email for our business. We want to be able to keep those separate, especially if we have an LLC. Um, using our personal email for business will again pierce that veil. Um, so all of a sudden our personal and our business are merged. <coughs> are you gonna use a local computer? Or are you gonna use webmail? Um, for the most part, uh, webmail is everywhere now. Um, you've got, if you have Outlook, you might have to install it on another computer, <coughs> but it can be accessed from anywhere. But what they're talking about mostly is 
are you using a, like a Gmail account that you can just log into Gmail from any computer and there it is? Or are you using something that you need to have signed in to be able to use it? I don't understand. Um, so Gmail is like Gmail, you can get on it. I can get on my email from any computer though. I just have to use my personal one. C correct. So, but for example, like my Outlook email for work, um, I can't get on it from anywhere. Like I, I can't access it from my laptop computer from home. And that's webmail, right? Yeah, that, that will be more of a webmail. That will that would be my computer mail. Webmail is like the portal limit. Yeah, so it's it's just out there somewhere, and like you can get it off the web, like a Gmail. Okay, and local. Okay, I, I think yeah. that's fine. All right. Sorry. No problem. Um, so keeping things straight in your email is just as important as keeping things straight in your filing cabinet. I'm sorry. Um, you know, um, having file folders that are for different contractors or for different businesses. So you don't have to go searching every time that you're looking for something. So if you might have a file folder that's working projects or items that are due, you might have a file folder that is like contracts or um, orders that were made. So things that you have, so you don't have to like search through however many emails you've got looking for the one thing you need. All right, so business software and spreadsheets. All right, so tracking information such as clients, inventory, um, product sales, employee timesheets, et cetera. This is really important. Um, you can have your employees fill out paper timesheets. That's fine, but you'll probably want to have them um, <coughs> inputted somewhere um, to get to the payroll part of that, unless you're cutting hand cutting checks for them. Um, but like I said, you have to, um, and you'll want to talk to the account your accountant about this if you're paying employees. Um, you have to be sure that you're taking out um, everything that you're supposed to be taking out as far as withholding the taxes. So um, it's not as cut and dried as somebody works, you know, for $10 an hour for 20 hours and they get $200. Um, it, there are tax withholdings and things that are expected um, for state and federal taxes, um, and other things. So it's really important um, if you don't understand all that um, to be talking to an accountant or a payroll person. Um, you can use a matrix of rows and columns. Uh, frequently used for financial is what if scenarios. Um, I am not good at that. So um, if you are great at that, that is um, all you. But I, it, as a person, like I use a QuickBooks accounting software for um, the nonprofits that I work with because it does the hard work for me um, and I don't have to figure things out all of the time. Um, if you're good at it and you can use spreadsheets, definitely more power to you. Um, but if you really need some help with that, uh, definitely um, a QuickBooks or something would have inventory tracking you can keep track of your clients and sheets and invoices and things like that. All right, so what do we need for business software and accounting? So if you're starting your first business, um, you'll quickly find out how important your accounting software is. Oops, sorry, everybody. Um, it keeps track of your financial records. Um, it reduces the amount of errors that you might have. It's definitely faster because, again, I'm saying it does the work for you. It can be inexpensive if you don't need it to be super high powered or if you're a nonprofit. Um, a lot of nonprofits get discounts for those types of things. 
definitely better organized. You can print out spreadsheets. You it'll pull reports for you. Oops, sorry. Um, but a lot of the things that you need to do need to be done accurately. For example, I was talking about payroll. You know, if you pay somebody wrong, not only does that affect them, but it affects you if you underpay them or overpay them. Um, it'll be a little bit more sophisticated. Um, and like a lot of the payroll things, a lot of the accounting softwares have payroll in them. So even if you do want to cut like a hand check, it will help you do the math of um, the taxes and the withholdings that you need to be putting in there. Um, generally, um, as you get more sophisticated, um, things will become a little bit more expensive. Depends on how much you're tracking, um, the, the types of mobile functions that you want it to have. For example, like I have QuickBooks on my phone because it's, um, you know, QuickBooks online, but if you need it to be a little bit more robust, you can only open it on a computer. If you need a program that does industry specific reports, um, then you might need a different software. Um, so it's important to kind of know what you're doing. Um, many of the business softwares or offer tutorials and free trials. So if you wanna try it out um, and see if it's for you, see if it's anything that you can do, um, they will be happy to walk you through that. Um, you can go um, online and do software trainings and, and webinars. So if you wanna look at a couple of different software programs, see if they're offering a webinar, um, check out YouTube. There's tons of videos on there on how to do things. So if you're learning a software, mostly anything can be found on YouTube. So um, just head over to YouTube and you can see kind of how people are doing things. There's lots of um, partners. So the SBA um, um, partners with SCORE, Small Business Development Centers, um, uh, women's business centers, there's US Export Assistance Centers, um, Veterans Business Outreach Centers. Um, those are all great places and all of them would more than likely be free and be able to assist you. Um, they may have programs. Oftentimes, um, every once in a while, we'll run a QuickBooks class through Chelsea also. So like an intro to QuickBooks or something a little bit um, more. So if you want an introduction to what is kind of happening, um, we offer those free programs every once in a while. Check with your community college. Oftentimes they might have interns or things like that that could help you out. Um, definitely you'll want to find an accountant um, because even if you're not using them on a weekly basis or monthly basis, Maybe you want to check, have an accountant that goes through your records quarterly to make sure you're on track, or maybe biannually. Um, so once midway through the year, and then once at tax time to make sure that you're good to go. You don't want to find out at tax time that everything is a disaster and um, whoever's doing your taxes for you um, has a hard time pulling things together because your records are not um, complete. So the biggest thing is that you're going to want to start with something that works now and then refine your business, refine it as your business grows. All right. So the key points to remember are use your record keeping tools that works for you, but um, keep track of what type, what size and like how much, uh, how complex it needs to be. You can grow that as your business grows. You can start out with your manila folders. You can go to your file cabinet. You can go to computer. You can start wherever you want. If you're more tech savvy and you just want to start with the computer, that's fine. Um, but use what works for you. Evaluate your business needs before purchasing business software. So don't just go out and buy QuickBooks 
um, without making sure that QuickBooks is what you need. Um, some businesses have business specific software, like hairdressers, for example, they're gonna want a booking system um, in with their software. And that's not something that QuickBooks offers. So um, they might need a different software. Start now. Okay, any questions? I have a question. Sure. I need to keep talking. No worries. On your business software training where you get information about figuring out what you need, blah, blah, blah. You had said have an accountant look over your books. I get that. And then you had said underneath and you didn't even talk about that was bookkeeping and consultants. Oh, okay. So to keep prices down for us, we don't have an accountant because we figure we're small. Sure. We're figured out and we're using a bookkeeping bookkeeper sure. i don't know if she's the best resource but she can afford her bookkeepers are great bookkeepers will keep you tr on track but the bookkeeper is not going to be able to file your taxes for you you're going to need an accountant for that um the bookkeeper will have all of your stuff prepared for you but you will need an accountant to make sure that um you know your taxes are being filed correctly so you might only need an accountant or, or a tax preparer like once a year. Your bookkeeper will keep you on track for that. Um, and sometimes people just use a consultant. Like they don't, it's not somebody that they have um, on payroll. Um, they just call them every once in a while when they need them. Some businesses are pretty savvy, but then they have a consultant then they, when they call when they need something a little bit more. Right, okay. Does that make sense? Oh, yeah, I was just like, oh, we don't have an accountant, but oh, yeah, I'm trying to save money with the other. But yeah. and your bookkeeper should um, keep you right on track. She filed um, for us last year, so I don't know. Uh, you mean, and, and maybe that's in her license to do that, and, and that could be fine. It depends on, so people call themselves a bookkeeper, but they have a larger license than that. Sure. Um, you know, and if, if they are trained to do that, then that is great. Um, then you then you wouldn't really need anything else. I have another question. Sure. Talking about business 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 spreadsheets, and you mentioned, of course, QuickBooks. Everyone talks about QuickBooks. Yep. You talk about Google Sheets. Sure, Google Sheets okay. is really just an Excel spreadsheet that is in Google. Is That's it okay? My husband, I keep talking about let's get QuickBooks. He's like. You're crazy to buy QuickBooks until you know that's what you need. Let us negotiate some soft, some spreadsheets. So yeah. he's doing it, but of course he's not sure what we need either. Yeah, so it's a, like thinking- I don't know at what point. So here, here's where you might wanna be thinking, um, thinking through, right? So if, for example, at some point you think your business needs a loan to grow, right? And you've gotten to a point where your your cash flow is pretty good, um, and you need a loan because your business needs a new fancy printer or something like that. You're a screen printing business, and you need a new piece of equipment. What the bank is going to want to see, and what any lender is going to want to see, is um, a P and L, a profit and loss statement. Um, they're going to want to see a balance sheet. And that's not something that you can really, unless you've inputted it all correctly into an Excel, um, it, that takes a lot of work to pull together. A QuickBooks is really going to be able to do that for you. What we saw at the bank um, a lot with um, COVID was that when the small, a lot of, many small businesses went for a PPP loan, they were not prepared to file for a PPP loan because they did not have the correct record. They had not been doing the correct record keeping. They were not able to pull together the numbers that the bank needed to file for the PPP loan. So a lot of small businesses were left without PPP assistance because they were not doing their bookkeeping correctly. Okay. Uh, I have a question, Maria. Yeah. <clears throat> So regarding record keeping, accounting, and things like that, if you find that you're not necessarily inclined 
to, you know, manage all of those by yourself, at what point do you start to consider outsourcing? So I would say that if you're not doing it, somebody needs to be doing it. Um, because um, when you go to file taxes, you small businesses have to file, you know, their taxes every year. If you haven't been keeping good records, um, you're not going to be able to file your taxes accurately. You don't know what your profit and loss looks like um, because you don't know. So for example, years ago, we worked with a business um, that just was keeping all of his receipts in a box. Um, and that's, and like, he had a, a box like this with like two years worth of receipts in it. He didn't remember what any of the receipts were for. How do you apply that? You know, is that something for the business? Where did that come from? How do you know how your profit and loss is looking? If you're not keeping track of that, you don't know um, how much money's coming in. You don't know how much money is going out. You don't know how much money you're really making. So all of that's really important because you should be looking at those numbers monthly to make sure that you're on track. So um, if you're not inclined to do that, then you definitely need to bring somebody on because you might actually make more money if somebody is tracking what you're doing and, and, be, and giving you helpful hints like, hey, you're not on track to be able to make payroll this month or, um, you know, we're... 50 sales off of being able to make rent this month. So if somebody needs to be keeping track of those numbers. So if it's not you, it needs to be somebody. Does that make sense? Yes, thank you. You're welcome. So we see that a lot with small businesses. That's why many small businesses fail because they don't know where their money's coming from, and where their money's going to exactly. Like you should know where every single penny of your money is coming from, the bills that need to get paid. So like that cash flow that we were talking about, where is it coming from? Where is it going to? How much is profit? How much is going back into the business? Um, how much are you paying yourself? Um, so this is really more a conversation for a, a bookkeeper or something like that. Um, and I'm happy to put people in touch with bookkeepers that we worked with. Any other questions? All right, if there's no other questions, we will um, call this a day. And um, I hope I see everybody on Thursday when we're talking about business plans and risk management for your business. Okay. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. Have a great afternoon. Yep. Thanks, Maria. No problem. Bye-bye.